Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Clue to say trading, Frank. End of the week report and a primer for the coming week starting May 1st. Actually, starting May 2nd, which is uh, tomorrow, Monday. We have had a very powerful couple of weeks despite market volatility and structured, uh, what I call structured volatility. It's been extremely profitable in many fronts. Selectivity is the key, as I like to say it, and act. We have had monster winners in the form of earnings reports with Amazon, with LinkedIn, with Baidu, with Expedia. We have had uh, big movers, trade alerts that were put in for Priceline and their multiple fronts. We have also had a few losses on the earnings side, which, if somebody followed the trade alerts, were mitigated somewhat and losses were minimized in the form of um, straddles where in the money puts were suggested to be bought along with the common and the calls going forward. Whichever the case, we have also had multiple winners in the form of individual stock picks, which have nothing really to do with the high momentum beta stocks Case in point, we have FCX, which was recommended weeks ago, up almost 300% or more in the options, and up a good solid 100% plus on the, actually more like 150% plus on the common. On CHK, Chesapeake Energy, another one that was suggested about six weeks ago or so. And more recently, in some very fast movers of small biotech stocks, RPRX, which were 200% generators, most recently was, there was a few of them actually, uh, uh, PTCT, PRGN, which went from a buck 40. Uh, which is actually a shipping uh, 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 carrier, which was recommended around a buck sixty, went to almost three dollars and sixty cents. The bottom line is that we're moving along. There are different ways to invest in the market. You can play the high beta momentum tra uh, 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 stocks, such as the Googles, the Amazons, the price lines. Forgot to mention Facebook, which was a monster winner, monster. Despite the fact that the stock chart didn't look that, that healthy, I recommended a buy on it based on what I saw and based on my knowledge of fundamental basis of why Facebook would have beaten the market, I mean, beaten the numbers. You can play the high beta momentum stocks. You can play some of the smaller ones, the dollar, one to, one to five dollar ones. And most importantly, you can play the markets in the form of S&P. SPX options, or UT options, or SPIs, or IWMs. We also have hedges in place, as I've shown many uh, several times, and which have also worked out very well for UVXY, both in common and in the calls. DWTI, which is the short inver uh, the inverse ETF or the short for oil. DRIP, D-R-I-P, are also powerful hedges that can make a significant amount of money. Now, keep in mind that hedges are meant to be exactly what it means in the English language, which are hedges against your longs. If you want to go one-sided bet big time that the market is going to completely come down and go with the, uh, it, 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 at that point, it's not a hedge anymore. That's a directional trade. So if the market goes the other way, you get completely smoked. Happened to us about three and a half weeks ago, or three weeks ago, and I was a victim of that too, which I mentioned in my previous video cast. It's a powerful market. The uptrend is still on. However, it is starting to get exhausted. So let's get straight into the markets right now. 
In the meantime, a very powerful reminder that every member, free trial subscriber, and everyone who's listened to this video cast should, and I, I believe it should be mandatory, that you that you read and review every single post that's put out on the Twitter real-time feed, on the Clueless 8 RT real-time feed, especially in the form of articles that I put out there, and sometimes with comments, because those are extremely actionable information and gives you a basis of understanding of what you need to do in an environment where volatility is king. In other words, if you can understand some of the news flows that are going to drive the market in the coming days or so, then you are much better prepared than somebody who's just purely looking at technicals or just a stock chart and then wondering why it doesn't work. Saying all that, here is a, on the background, you're seeing a, for a better choice of words, a naked chart of the E-minis, which are the futures that control the S&P 500, aka the markets. So I'm going to draw a bunch of lines on them, and I'm going to show you a few things that I observed over the weekend. And the reason for the slight delay in publishing this report tonight was the fact that I was monitoring international developments, especially in Japan, which I have, I have uh, highlighted over the past couple of weeks, with the strengthening yen versus the U.S. dollar and the consequences and the ramifications of the Japanese market, which obviously has an effect on our markets too at one given point or another in the sense that currency developments do have direct impacts on equity prices. Because if a particular uh, currency from a powerful developed nation such as China or Japan, and we have gone through this before, is starting to go one way or the other, you can rest assured that you will feel the brunt of it on our side regardless of what you're trading. That's what's called risk on, risk off, macro global economic theory. And my job is to basically try to highlight those and do use some predictive analysis and my knowledge on that, on those fronts to explain to people what they can expect. So all that is all actionable info. And it's very, very important, including the articles on oil, which had the last one that I put out four hours ago with my comments that possible output hike could lead to lower prices read that all right we are entering may we are going to enter a period right now over the short term of massive volatility you need to be tuned in you need to track every chart that i put out there you need to attend hopefully the advanced coaching sessions you need to listen to this video cast and you need to be alert. You need to be flexible. You need to be adaptive. And you cannot, in one way or the other, think that the market is a linear being. In other words, 1 plus 1 equals 2. So it's now coming down. It's just going to go all the way straight down. Anything can happen. We have seen that before. But I'm showing you what the bullish and the bearish case scenarios are. So let me zone in, starting off, while we can go which was all the way back to the bad old days. Maybe some of you weren't around. I was certainly there on Wall Street, fielding calls, managing client portfolios, institutional and retail. That was in the middle of the storm. So when it comes to experience, it's tough to beat what I have. So here we have the crash of 2007 all the way down to 2009. Okay, we're going to draw some simple lines here. I'm going to make these lines so that everyone can see it. Make them a little bit thicker. There we go. Bingo. So you have that. This was the lows in 2009 when everyone thought we're going to go back to the dark ages of Killing bisons and dinosaurs. Well, bison, so I guess so. Um, 
with a, with uh, 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 stone hammers and arrows, but it didn't happen that way, right? We had a massive bull market in between some very severe corrections. And it's very, very important for all my members specifically to be somewhat educated about the history of market, what markets do. Only then will they truly, in the long run, become successful traders and investors, in my opinion. So here we are. This, what happened? That's a two. Save as default. Okay. So here we are. This is a weekly chart going back to 2008-2007. What I used to look back when I'm in my previous video cast since I started my service back on April 15th of 2014, I used to talk about something called the acceleration phase. That acceleration phase in the market, that acceleration phase in the market started around November, October, November of 2011. In fact, October 3rd of 2011. Okay, so let's draw a trend line from there. Trying to join as many points as possible. Any of you can do this, okay? Any of you can do this. And I, and I encourage everyone to play around with uh, market charts and stock charts and get their own intuitive gut strength to see what they, what they see. Because everyone has a cognitive bias in what they see. And a, just like art, go to your museum. If you know who the actors are, you know what the history of that art, artist is and that painter, then you can make a determination what you see in there. So saying all that, so this was the acceleration phase. Well, as you can clearly see, we broke that acceleration phase twice. Once in August of 2015, and the second time in, on, in December of 2015. And since then, believe it or not, we have actually not even come above the trend. Because above the trend means that the E-minis would have to be above 2160, add about five, six, maybe seven points to it to arrive at the S&P 500 um, number. So in this 2160 on the E-minis would roughly be around 2167 or so on the S&P 500. Well, we never got there because the most we got there on May of 2015, which was about a year ago, right, was 2134. So that's your weekly chart going on here. And as you can see here from the weekly chart, we are not at the cusp of the next massive bull market. Now, coming from a person who has been correct on the overall markets since 2009 and even earlier, but just, you know, since 2009, I've been very correct on the markets overall. And even, you know, recently, as, as you all know. I'm telling you, in my opinion, the bull market is in trouble. But then, as traders, we're not looking to see whether, a, whether we're not playing one-year bull markets or two-year bull markets. We are looking to see what's going to happen in a matter of weeks, if not in a matter of days, and in some cases, in a matter of hours. Traders make a big, big fundamental mistake of trying to be long-term thinkers with very short-term time horizons when it comes to looking at their P&L or profit and loss statement. They don't even want to hold something for 10 days before bailing out. So forget about talking about 10 months. So let's face facts here, okay? So the bottom line is that we never got above this acceleration line here, 2160 or, or so, uh, on the E-minis to, to really say, okay, we're in the next stage of a massive move. Can it happen? It can absolutely happen. There's a lot of stuff out there on the bullish side, on the global front, that can make that happen. 
but I'm telling you what I see happening now. So at this point, you have a low end of the market at around 1800 S&P, which translates into 19, like I told you, like around 1990 uh, or so, 1985 on the E-minis. We know 1800 is a, is a very critical level for the long-term viability of the markets. And this is where we are right now. So that's your weekly chart for you. So looking at it very simple and try to keep this uh, session very, very simple. I'm going to do, you know, two video casts. We've got five minutes more on this session. Um, you can see here that looking at this, at, at, the, at the overbought, oversold conditions, which have worked like magic on short and long term positions and trading uh, strategies, as you all know, we are overbought and we're trending down. So on the weekly, you can clearly see we are trending down. Now, is it possible that we do this? Let's zoom in. Is it possible that we... Is it possible that we come down here, basically come down a little bit more before we bounce, like we did back, um, back in November? Sure it is, but those are short-term bounces which last, but not really, they last for about 30 days or so. But the key point is that when you start to see a move, a topping process, remember it's a process, not a one-day thing, right? A topping process, they generally tend to come down and get deep oversold every single time. So the reality of the thing is this will do the same thing. Now at what point do they get deep oversold? Well, let me show you. Right? So you can see that it's a topping process. Now it can turn around here and then move up more and stay overbought for another few weeks. That's possible. I'm just showing you what the possibilities are. So looking at this thing here on the weekly. Going into the months of the hot months of summer, hopefully, and I think it's going to be hot summer, we are starting to lose some altitude. But you also have major supports. You have 2020, which is a major support on the S&P 500 and on the E-minis, which is the test of the 50-day moving average. And I'm starting to see something which is very interesting, and this is bullish, is the 34-day moving average is actually starting to curl up. Because if you get a crossover of the 34 over the 50, then that's a very powerful signal to buy the market and ride the wave more. The Bollinger's are simple to read. Upper Bollinger is at 2148. Lower Bollinger is around, again, around 1800. So 1800 repeatedly is uh, a very powerful support. And if we break 1800, if we thump down here again, it might not hold. I've mentioned this several times before. And at that point, you're looking at some, you know, you're looking at some serious moves down on the market. So that's your weekly chart for you as far as I can see here based on the technicals that are in place. Now, keep in mind, if we are going to initiate another major move, a multi-month rally on the market, um, in other words, start the another leg of the bull, of the intermediate uh, uh, bull market. Then we need to break above 2160 or so on the S&P 500 or 2155 on the E-minis. Just so you know, because that is part of the acceleration um, acceleration um, channel that I just drew for you from October of 2011, all right? But in the meantime, you're, you're starting to see some red candles develop. Whether or not it's going to turn into a big fat red candle, which means another 500, 700 point type of drops, we don't know yet. But 2020 and then in the 2000 level would be major support levels for the S&P 500, in my opinion. Keep monitoring the internals, see how these lines react, and over time, you'll start to read them very well too. 
So if you have long-term swings, this is what you have to watch.